Hello friends, this is Self-Critical Automaton, your third favourite internet opinion haver, and today it is time to continue my Let's Play of Mist with episode 8. We've got one age left to visit out of the four that are available, not counting this hub we're already in, the Selenitic Age. So, as always, let's... you know what, let's just start with the puzzling. No, no need for monologuing for me, no need for any of my... Relentless opinion having. Let's just uh, spin to win. It's surprising how many games are um, absolutely dedicated on spinning. I've always said this about popular internet video game Dota. It's all about the spins. And of course, now we have the rise of incredibly heavily gambling focused games, which will suck away all of your money and with them your life. Also, extremely spin to win. But that's a different game, and we're playing Mist. So, the Selenitic Age, the final age we'll visit, is, in my opinion, one of the most tedious ages in the game. There are a few tedious components, as you may remember from, you <laughs> from the last episode, but the Selenitic Age has the worst puzzle in the game, which relies on distinguishing very similar audio cues. Let's just write this down. So, 59 volts, a fairly obvious clue. We've seen electrical cables on the island. We know exactly where we need to go to at least find the cables. And do you know what is usually true of electrical cables? They lead to electrical apparatus. But yeah, so the coming age has the worst puzzle in the game, in my opinion. It's, uh, well, you know, I won't describe it until we have to deal with it, but it is generally so tedious and frustrating that I've always been of the opinion that people should just skip it, even if you are trying to solve all of the puzzles yourself. It's honestly worth just uh, looking up the correct sequence of inputs that you need to complete the challenge. So let's go and uh, see what we can do about this electrical thing. Hmm, geez, that looks like an electrical pylon to me. And this is a breaker switch, which does absolutely nothing. So, since this game is so... well, I mean, it's not so pretty now, but... I think that there is a real value to preserving these original vis visuals. I think that there's a real value to the art of that era being preserved. I think it has a very strong beauty of its own, which we've kind of lost in this day and age. It's only very recently that people have started making art that's explicitly nostalgic for the CG of, say, 2001, 2002. Actually, hang on, let's have a quick look here. Did I miss it? I think I missed it. This is where the seagull spawns. Shout out to my good buddy, girl-like substance, who has a deep fondness for seagulls and unfortunately will not be seeing one today, but the next time I load this zone, I guess. <laughs> not that the game functions in that way at all, but you know, the next time we come back to this area we might be able to see that animation if I don't skip it too quickly. But yeah, it's only very recently that a nostalgia for sort of 2001 era CG has, has started to arise and people have um, begun to become nostalgia for, nostalgic for it. That's a weird way to phrase that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So I have to get the power to 59 volts, it looks like. This is the power, this is the power to the spaceship, so let's fiddle with this for a minute, I guess. 10, 17, 33, 52, 60, yeah, okay. So this is kind of a blackjack system. We have to hit 59 without going over it, and that's going to require us to add specific values. I think these are just listed as numbers, I don't... Wait, what if I try 59? What if I try 5, 9? Nope, that ain't it. In fact, I think... I noticed that power to spaceship didn't happen that time, so I sus... Oh, is that? Is that the seagull? I'm not sure. Is that just a black smudge? I think we have to go and reset the breaker switch every single time we fail to do this. It definitely made a noise it didn't make the last time. Because, you know, we're putting too much power into the spaceship, so it's overloading, so we have to figure out exactly... 
which sequence of buttons will prevent it from overloading. So that gives 10, that gives 7, that gives 8, that gives 16, that gives 5, that gives 1, that gives 2, 22, 19, and 9. So in a moment, I'm going to cut away while I while I do the tedious make work of actually solving this puzzle, and then I'll show you what the solution is. But um, yeah, it is really interesting to me that people have developed a nostalgia for this era of um, of CG rendering, and you can find you know many many Twitters, many Tumblers devoted to cataloging that aesthetic, both the original examples and the new modern ones. It's fascinating that the last decade was characterized by nostalgia for the 1980s. And we seem to have jumped straight through the 90s to a, to a nostalgia for about 2001, 2002. Because it was, it was the, the 2010s that really had the rise of synthwave as a, as a big movement and, and retrowave and outrun and um, all of the ways that spilled out into art and game making and all of that kind of stuff. So I'll be back with you in just a moment. I'm going to note down the specific values that these do, and then I'm going to do mathematics. And by mathematics, I mean I'm going to start pushing them at random until I get the result. And here we are. I suspect that there's actually any number of these that you could, uh, any number of ways to solve that puzzle. I, I'm sure you can make the number 59 with a wide number of those uh, selections. Aha. Uh -huh. We now have access to the interior of this delightfully Jules Verne rocket ship. What does this do? Okay, this is a musical puzzle. This is gonna get frustrating. So, <laughs> we have a musical puzzle and at the back a pipe organ. It is a really nice touch that they actually added a full scale here. I wonder what happens if I... Nope, nope, we're not doing that one yet. This game doesn't even have a genocide route. Maybe after Dishonored. Presumably the nature of this puzzle is that I can use this keyboard to identify specific notes. And once I've identified those tones, I can match those tones over here. So I guess, you know, good luck if you're tone deaf or indeed completely deaf, in which, uh, in which case this puzzle will be impossible for you to solve. Even today, there's a huge problem in the games industry of accessibility, but at least now we are starting to see games designed with an eye towards accessibility and the intention of making them playable, whether that's through a colorblind mode or through subtitles even. This game doesn't have subtitles. You know, there's any number of ways in which games can be made more accommodating, but you know, even today we don't do that in a lot of games. And in 1993, honestly, it wouldn't have been that strange for them to have subtitles actually, now that I think about it. Regardless, let's have a look. So I'm going to just go out on a limb and assume that there is hints for this puzzle in this book because I haven't seen any hint anywhere about musical notes or any of that kind of thing. And also, you know, the, the hint in the tower only gave us the vaults. So let's have a look. And it is going to be time for Unburnt Storybook. Story time number four. It has been a while since I have heard only silence and I enjoy it greatly. I think for some reason I do not feel altogether welcome in this new world in which I have arrived. But how could I be unwelcome in an age with no inhabitants? It is, of course, only in my head. This world is very beautiful, but I think I have yet to ever write in a journal that an age I have linked to is horrid or disgusting. From the grassy hill where I am standing, I can see green fields below, along with a few scattered forests. A rather large lake looms some distance from where I am standing, yet the water's blue can be seen plainly from here. The air is fresh and the sky is sparkled with white clouds. It is absolutely breathtaking, and yet that strange feeling again. Perhaps it is the hot breeze that continues to blow from the north. Hotter than I would have imagined, it almost singes my skin, and I feel quite uncomfortable when it comes. I will try to ignore it. Night has almost arrived and the sunset is spectacular. Oranges and reds have settled above the western horizon. Though night has come, the horizon still glows red long past the sunset. Dark reds flow from the horizon and blend into the black sky. Again, the feeling, and I am beginning to believe that it is not all in my mind. I must sleep now. I will need my strength to explore more tomorrow. I have had to return home due to an unpredictable natural occurrence more frightening than I have ever experienced. 
I was awakened by terrible shakings in the ground and explosions on all sides of me. Gigantic balls of fire were falling from the sky and I immediately left in fear of my life. I must remember to bring a missed linking book with me when I return, in case the one left there has been destroyed or damaged. I've returned to a different world than the one I only left three months ago. It has been transformed into a barren desert land with only gigantic craters scattered across the land to provide variety. Strangely enough, the small grassy hill where I spent my first night remains exactly the way I found it. Apparently the falling meteors did not hit this area, leaving an oasis in the midst of this horrible desolation. The hot wind I remember has turned into a rather pleasant breeze, which is at least one improvement. I fear it is the only improvement. The magnificent lake I saw on my first visit is now completely dried up. However, another lake now exists and appears to be quite a bit larger. I assume one of the falling meteors created this lake due to its circular shape and the jutting rock that grows out of the centre. The rest of this world seems like desert, although I will verify that statement with closer inspection. Though this world has little visual excitement to offer, it offers much to the ears. Sounds constantly flow throughout my ears, and I have found where a few of them originate. It seems, as Catherine says, I do find beauty in everything. Last night I was awakened by a horrible hissing. I was sweating, and the heat was so intense that I immediately dipped my head in a nearby stream to cool it down. The hot breezes had returned, along with a low roar from the ground. I walked a short distance to observe some red flames shooting up from the north. Suddenly the ground began to crack, and a huge chasm opened. The chasm continued to grow until it was far too wide to cross. Then the tumult subsided, leaving only a dull roar. I have decided, however, that I can use the chasm to my advantage. Perhaps the heat from the chasm can be harnessed. And then we have a diagram of some kind of steam apparatus. Even as the chasm has ripped into the surface of this world, it has opened up a whole new world to explore. Although uncomfortably hot, I found it possible to reach a cave in the chasm that had been created, and I have now explored deep into the crust of this planet. I have found a vast underground cave system that will take many years to map and explore. I would also look for a safer way to reach the underground than through the chasm wall. This age seems to change on its own, so I feel I should leave again and see if things are different when I return. It is also important that I check on Cirrus and Akinar and make sure everything is going well. When I return, I hope to bring back some tools I will need for my plans to explore the underground. The abundance of raw materials here is beginning to amaze me. I have returned with some of the complex tools I knew I would be needing. I assumed I would have to return for more basic materials, however, it seems as though I will be able to find everything I need here. Of course, iron is abundant, but I have found titanium occurring naturally. I am all the more excited to begin work. Everything is set, and I look forward to tomorrow. My raw materials are all here. I think I will be able to have most of my additions to this age completed within one year. I so love working with my hands, whether writing or building. And at this point, the text fades out, as if the writing has blurred away. Well, and I have decided... blank. Three meters is not enough support for the beams... blank. We also have... diagrams of some kind of rotational apparatus, and what looks like a radio receiver dish. Unimaginably strong, blank, and then a sketch of the rocket ship. To be one of my most prized inventions, I am extremely blank. Would never have imagined it to come together, blank. I doubt blank could possibly work with 14 instead of blank. Completely fatigued, I am so happy to have completed blank tomorrow. I am leaving today in order to bring back Sirius and Akinar. I have left them alone in Channelwood. I believe they will enjoy all there is to see here. The age seems to have stabilised, and I believe the meteors set off a period of volcanic activity by piercing into the shallow crust. But the tremors have become few. I have just noticed that a large amount of this journal has curiously vanished from the very pages on which I wrote over the last 18 months. Fortunately, I have copied many of my construction notes into another journal. I do not understand the many mysteries of this world, but I trust I will discover logical answers to my questions. I have a feeling that many of my questions can be answered in another age, to which I hope to travel soon. But for now, I must simply accept this world's mysteries and take pride in my accomplishments. Then we have a diagram of that piano scale at the back of the, uh, the rocket ship, and we have what I presume to be a map of the region he explored. Although, if this is ocean around the outside and he was on an island, then this is definitely not a lake but a lagoon. I'm going to note down this puzzle element and then go back and see if I can crack it. So that is 
incredibly tediously now recorded. I've just realized I didn't need to write down the entire third octave on this on this keyboard. But oh well, for the sake of completeness, it's still in my notes, which will be uh, put up on Patreon, just for anyone who is already subscribing and is curious to see how I record stuff when I play these kinds of games. So there's numerals on here which indicate the order in which I need to play the notes. So I'm going to guess that the order of those notes applies directly to here, so one, two, three, four, five. So I'll find tone one on the keyboard and then have to input it here on, on slot one over here. So let's see, tone number one looks like it's this one. Okay. Which I think is that. Yeah, I think that's right. So yeah, if you are tone deaf, this is a puzzle you cannot solve. If you are ordinary deaf, then that's also a puzzle you cannot solve. And I think that's kind of a kind of a problem. But at least the fan community, I'm sure, has resources that suggest, say, the number of increments you need to raise or lower these. Number two looks like it's this one. Honestly, these kind of suck to listen to. It sounds like a baseball organ. sounds more like it. I did actually learn to play the piano as a child, but it was mostly due to parental expectations and my incredibly severe performance anxiety meant, meant that I could never actually perform in front of anyone. And it was so severe that I couldn't practice even if anyone else was in the house because I knew they'd be able to hear me, which is why I eventually gave up on music and then never went into a performance medium ever again. <laughs> Yep, I think that one's correct too, which means that we need number four, which I think is this key. That should be also correct, mm -hmm. which finally leaves number five. Actually, now that I think about it, you don't even need an external resource to be able to solve this problem if you have hearing difficulties because the number of steps along keyboard is also the number of increments on the on the tone the tone levers tone markers whatever you'd call those so you just need to count the number of steps up so this would be one two three four five six and therefore this should just be one that should be six Although if you can't differentiate between the tones, you can't necessarily tell how many steps up and down it's gone since there's only mouse control, which is nicely analog and very pleasant with a lot of the ways to interact with this game. But in this instance, perhaps not ideal. Is that, is that it? Did that do something? I think I, I think I may not have this entirely correct. <laughs> That's off by one. Is that, is it, did it work? Aha, fantastic. I am a genius. We've established this in the past and it's definitely still true now. Oh, is this, is this a technological linking book? Is this not actually a book, but this one's a mechanical apparatus? That's interesting. I assumed that this was some kind of a magical art permanently tied to, to the books themselves. This is really peculiar. So we'll just watch this little run through of the uh, the zone and then we will step in and next time we'll build, begin solving more audio puzzles, including the worst puzzle in the game by far. So it looks like, it looks like this mechanical dimension shifting apparatus is less reliable than the books. Presumably they, they found some way of rendering it rendering the same effect that they could achieve with their mystical books, <laughs> mystical books, using some kind of mechanical apparatus. Anyway, that is going to be all from me for today. Thank you so much for watching. Come back next time for, well, this, I suppose. Please make sure to like, subscribe, and especially share, and check out my Twitch channel for regular streams. On Twitter you can find announcements and one tweet micro reviews, and if you like what I do and want to support me you can donate on Patreon or Ko-fi. The links are all in the description, and thank you so much for watching.